I'm David Watson, I'm the manager of the Kylo Sutherland Development Trust. Since 2011, we've been involved in the regeneration of the Falls of Shin. When the private owner decided they didn't want to redevelop it, then somebody had to step in and, and do something. Now we have a fantastic, award-winning visitor centre there. One of the more visible projects we've undertaken is the regeneration of the, the square that you see behind me in, in the centre of our guy. Due to the Trust's involvement in a lot of these uh, big capital projects, we've actually developed a lot of skills and, and we see those skills retained within our staff as one of our biggest assets. We're now offering a consultancy service to help other organisations deliver their capital build projects. My name is Henrik Mitschke, I'm the project officer for Minganish Community Hall Association. The Ferry Pools is a, a succession of waterfalls. The previous car park had a total capacity of about 30 and we're getting a footfall of up to 186,000 people. We had to get all the cars off the road. It was not going to make any difference otherwise. We had to get a lease, an operating lease with the Outdoor Access Trust for Scotland. And as part of the lease there's a, a percentage fixed payment. That lease payment is what's retained by the Community Hall Association. Projects like this are so important. If we can generate our own income, we can plough the income back into the communities, into the environment. The Winterstaple Quarter is about the regeneration of the High Street of Dumfries and we are seeking to take ownership of buildings in the centre of the High Street which have been um, empty for a significant period of time. And, uh, the idea being that we can uh, use that as a catalyst to regenerate the High Street as a whole. The end goal is fundamentally for the Mid-Steeple Quarter to be a vibrant mix of commercial, creative, residential, leisure and also for the project itself to be catalysing other forms of commercial activity across the broader town centre within Dumfries. Bridge End Farmhouse is what I would describe as one of the greatest examples of people power and community. It's not just a physical space, it's all the, the wonderful moments and the things that go on and it's about inspiring people to grow and, and giving them a, a purpose and an opportunity to do so and I think that's my favourite part of Agenda, it's this the more able, the less able, you know there's this wide range of massively committed volunteers and uh, I, yeah, on a daily basis I, my heart sings with that. I'm Neville Martin. I'm one of the trustees for the Sandwick Social and Economic Development. The community got together and managed to raise funds to buy the weaving shed and try and develop the cafe as a going concern within the community and to meet the tourist demand which was increasing. Over the years we've managed to get more funding to improve the insulation to fit out the building and we're spending 180000 on a car park in front of the building. The visitor centre is a really important hub to Sandwick and its community. I'm Marie Hay and I'm the general manager for North Energy which is the Polygroup company. In about 2007 we got climate challenge funds and came up with a structure which uh, works really well in the Shetland climate. If you're interested in having a section of the polycrub, you're allocated a single bed and that bed enables you to grow fruit or vegetables or in some cases precious flowers as well. The other nice thing about the polycrub is it's become a bit of a, a social hub in Hillswick and there's a great sense of camaraderie and sharing. We now sell them Orkney, Sky, Western Isles, mainland Scotland, even as far as France and the Falklands now. My name is Sandra Seater and I'm the chairman of the Western Development Trust. We put up a, a large turbine in 2009, which is where most of our cash flow comes from. One of the very first things the Trust did when it came into existence was that it did a lot of campaign work to bring the care centre to the island and that's just made a huge difference for the community. We've now started a, a charity shop that various smaller community organisations can use. The different community groups on the island, they will adopt the shop for a week and they'll keep 50% of the money they make that week and then the rest of the money gets put in a shared pot. I think what the Development Trust have managed to achieve over the years is to give people hope and a focal point of driving the regeneration within the Kyle of Sutherland. Having a core group of enthusiastic and focused members from the community driving a project forward but also making sure that that core group has very good governance and structure to ensure the legacy of a project. We look to the community to tell us what it is that they believe is needed to keep the community a vibrant place and we will have a go at whatever they come up with. 
there's a real feeling of positivity in this community and um, NCDC want to be part of helping to keep that feeling going and to create a resilient, thriving community. Just because we're a remote island, we're not at a disadvantage and we still have the same services and the same quality of life as you would get in other places. It's not just about tourism. Tourism is very important, but so is our community and we're very proud of our community.